All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're going to look at thermal stress and axially loaded members. And specifically, what we'd like to be able to do by the end of this video is calculate the effects. And when we say effects, we're talking about stress or reactions, internal loadings of an axially loaded member that is subject to some sort of temperature change, whether it's a temperature increase or a temperature decrease. And what we know, or at least what we have a sense of, is that when there is a temperature change, if the heat goes up, then it tends to expand. And if the temperature decreases, it gets colder, brr, then it contracts. And at least that's the sense that we have from our experience in doing whatever it is that we do that causes things to heat up or cool down. For us in an engineering, I guess, application, this deformation is typically linearly related to the temperature change. At least that's what we observe experimentally. And for a homogeneous isotropic material, so homogeneous means it's the same throughout, isotropic has got the same material properties in all the directions, this axial deformation is alpha times the temperature change times the original length. This coefficient of thermal expansion typically has the units of 1 over degree C, or some people like to say strain per degree C, but you know that, that millimeter per millimeter or that the normal strain is dimensionless. So a lot of times people will give the number as 1 per temperature, uh, 1 per degrees Fahrenheit, or even 1 per degree Kelvin. And then that delta T is the actual temperature change. If the temperature is increasing, then it's a positive change. If the temperature is decreasing then it's a negative change here this lowercase delta T is the axial deformation or the change in length that occurs due to the temperature effect and L is the length of the material now something that we want to distinguish is that if I have a statically determinate member it's free to expand and move around and there's gonna be no stresses that are gonna occur inside that structural element so if I have a uniform temperature change, this thing is going to be free to expand on its own. No thermal stresses in the statically determinate structure. But if it's statically indeterminate, and I'm again experiencing this uniform temperature change, now my member, my component, is no longer free to, to expand the way it wants. It's constrained, and it's going to have stress. As it relates to us in a first course in mechanics and materials, when I have something that's axially loaded only and experiencing a uniform temperature change, I will only develop stresses if I have a statically indeterminate member. Then I'm going to use the same methods I use for statically indeterminate structure with loading on it, you know, coming up with compatibility equations or using the force method to come up with a compatibility equation to solve out for the effects. And when we say effects, we're talking about stresses and reactions whatever we need to know so that we can understand what's going on with this structure. All right, so that's our, our brief introduction to thermal stress and axially loaded members. You know, there's no use in this equation unless we know how to use it, so let's do a practice problem next. Structure free!